morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is the eighth week of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. In today's video, I'm going to share with you guys five things that I keep in mind when I am trying to get back into shape. Uh, but before we do that, I have a couple of things to share with you. Now, in light of recent events, I have been really thinking deeply about ways that I can help my community and, and bring opportunities to uh, minority uh, music students as well. And uh, one of the things that I thought would be great um, t it would be to help get my YouTube channel uh, viewers involved as well. And um, so the first thing that actually came to mind to me was uh, this program in Chicago called Camp, and it's called Chicago Arts and Music Project. It was started um, just a few years ago by uh, Lindsay Fredrickson. We went to college together, and it is a free music program for kids in the Garfield Park area, and um, you know, it's just, they're, they're just dedicated to bringing quality music education to the underserved community in Chicago. And so one thing you can do to help if you are interested is, um, you know, if you have an old instrument laying around, you can donate, um, or you can also donate money. So they they accept instrument donations and monetary donations as well, and um, it goes directly to um, helping bring in quality instruction to the kids. And um, they're actually doing uh, online instruction all summer as well, um, which I think is pretty cool. So if you're looking to um, help out uh, the community, I think that is um, a great way to help out. I will include a link in the description of the video below here so you can head on over there and check it out if you're interested. Now, um, another thing, many of you already know this, but I have a Patreon page and I started just um, during this pandemic a little Saturday morning series called Clarinets wait, what's it called? Oh, Clarinets Cats and Coffee. And um, I just, you know, post um, a little thing every Saturday morning and I give viewers um, maybe an exercise or two to work on and, you know, just um, little tips here and there that you can think about during your weekend or your week of practicing. And if you're interested in supporting this initiative more, you can actually be part of my Patreon community and I have various tier levels and I'm not going to go into that um, too much in detail at the moment, but if you're interested, just click on the link below and check it out. There's a $3 tier just for my YouTube followers, um, but if you're interested in more, there are other tiers there as well. So um, I want to thank my current supporters on Patreon, and um, I also want to thank you guys for, for just watching and sharing and being part of my community. So if you can't give money, that's totally cool. I am just grateful that you guys are part of this community and that you find my work useful and helpful. Now, I also give private lessons as well. I will put a link in the description below. Um, if you're interested in that, that is separate from YouTube. It's separate from Patreon. Um, all you got to do is click on the link and send me a little message and let me know if you're interested in taking remote clarinet lessons. All right, I think that's about it. So yeah, why don't we go ahead and just get started on this whole routine of getting back into shape. Yeah, um, whatever your reason is, I mean, you know, maybe you took a break during the pandemic, that's okay. It, it was a crazy time and it's still going on, but you know, now that things are opening up, you know, maybe you're like excited to start playing with your chamber group, I know I am, and you just want some guidance on getting back into shape and that's where this video comes in handy. Or, you know, perhaps you took a little time off this past week just to think about everything that was going on in our country right now um, and that's okay too so whatever your reason this video will help you out with getting back into shape now there are five things that I keep in mind when I am cycling through my fundamentals and I'm trying to get back into shape as quickly as possible so the first thing is breathing then embouchure third is legato air Fourth is articulation, and finally is hand and finger position. And all of these five things I try to focus on and cycle through, and, and I use various exercises to help myself get to a point where I can play for 60 minutes um, with, with comfort. And um, 
for me, that takes about three days to for other people to not really know that I'm out of shape and maybe about a week um, for me to know <laughs> that I'm definitely back into shape. So um, that's, that's just my experience. But number one, breathing. Just make sure you're taking in a deep enough breath of air. And I say to, and I've been saying this to a lot over, over the online lessons the past couple of months, take two seconds to breathe in. I think I saw this in a master class with Anthony McGill and I thought it was just, it was a great idea. Um, so one, 1,000, two, 1,000. And as you exhale, this is something I picked up from, from Larry. As you exhale, just allow your body the natural weight of your body to allow the air to exhale in the most natural way possible. And you're not going to get a nice natural exhale unless you take a really good inhale. So you take your two breaths in and you can just practice exhaling without your clarinet just to get everything expanding and contracting and getting used to that, uh, that mobility that it needs to have. So that brings me straight into the second topic, which is embouchure. And if you're tripped up, you want, you need an embouchure review, go watch my video on the clarinet embouchure checklist. It'll take you through the exact steps you need to get your face back into shape. I'm also going to make a playlist um, and I'm going to put it in the description below of all the things you can use um, to help yourself get back into shape. Um, so anyway, back to embouchure. The basic thing is you want to make sure that you build your embouchure around the bone structure of your face and you use these muscles to uh, control your sound essentially um, instead of your jaw because if you're biting then you're going to you know bite through your lip and get jaw pain or, or uh, you know multitude of other problems and you know you can only bake a an embouchure for so long before it actually starts to hurt so take this as an opportunity to basically just start over and teach your face reteach your face on uh, what to do and what sounds the best and so number one and number two goes right into my third big fundamental which is legato air and I don't think enough teachers actually in, in, talk enough about what what legato air really does for one's playing but i personally believe that it is the life force of of playing if you can do legato air really well your your articulation is going to be better um your your every your your air Phrase shaping is going to be better. It's not just good for playing legato, um, but it's often attached, you know, air, legato air is often attached with this this idea of, of breathing. So I call it legato air. And one thing you can actually physically feel when you're doing it right is the vibration in your lips of your sound that's happening. So if your core is working and your throat, everything is relaxed and your air is just shooting straight at the reed in, in the fastest way possible, you're gonna feel your lips buzzing with the, with the vibration of your mouthpiece and your reed. And so again, if you just practice, That's all you need to do when you go and play the clarinet. Um, so that brings me into articulation. So your legato air, you're doing great, it's feeling good, you're playing your long tones and you're doing all your slurred stuff. Now it's time to add the articulation in. And it's really not that much harder um, to, to articulate tip of the tongue to the tip of the reed. But if you make your articulation as natural as the exhalation of your breath, your articulation is going to sound so effortless and easy. Anyway, so practice articulation with this whole breathing exercise, right? Yeah. 
if you blow through the articulation, you're never going to have any problems. And, and I forgot to mention before, make sure that even when you start in a, in a relaxed way, uh, make sure when you exhale that you keep that momentum going and you keep the air exiting your body at the highest rate of speed possible. So you may have to work a little harder toward the end of your breath to keep the rate of speed of your air coming out um, the same as it is in the beginning. But the most important thing is to always start in the most relaxed way possible. And the fifth thing is is to just make sure you are exercising your hand and fingers. Um, and so I'm going to go in really quick to my routine and I will include some of my favorite little hand and finger exercises to get back into everything. So um, long tone exercise. I like to do the legato warm up that I did. Uh, I think I posted a video a couple of months ago. Um, so check that out. Now the second thing I like to do um, actually exercises legato air, my fingers, in, in my armature all at the same time, and that would be Albert Scales. I do Albert Scales 30 minutes every day. It's a great exercise for my hands and fingers, and one of these days I will show you exactly what I do when I practice Albert Scales, but for now I'm just going to tell you that I do the two-click method. I start at 60, I you know, do two clicks, two clicks after I play the whole page down, two clicks up, two clicks up until 30 minutes is up. And however fast I get them that day is however fast I get them. And man, you can really feel it in your fingers if you do the two click method on those. So um, that's one thing I recommend. Now after Albert Scales, I like to do something that exercises the musical muscle in my brain and I really love doing the short little exercises like in the Krebs book or Close or Behrman. So I'll include a page of the uh, Krebs exercises in the description here just so um, you guys kind of know what I'm talking about if you don't already know. And then after the crutch exercises or whatever little etude, I'll start practicing my articulation. And last week I posted one, or no, two weeks ago I posted one of my favorite articulation etudes, which is uh, the Jean Jean. Uh, but I also love the Kel Staccato studies as well. And there are a bunch of rose etudes and just all kinds of things. So make sure you choose some sort of etude or exercise to exercise that articulation muscle. And then on top of that, you know, assuming you, you were practicing your Albert scales, um, your hands and fingers are probably pretty well exercised. Um, but if you want something a little bit, uh, a little bit different, um, I recommend doing some of these like short close exercises or even some of the Jean Jean Vade Makeum exercises as well to just kind of start building, rebuilding the muscles in the hands and fingers. So I will include a link in the description as well. So this video is basically my routine of how to get back into shape after taking a break. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play a couple little Krebs exercises for you guys because I think they're pretty and I love them. And I'll go ahead and include a link to those in the description of this video as well. Um, so that being said, I hope you guys find this video useful.
thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my Patreon page if you have a moment. And, you know, if you want to be part of Chicago Arts and Music Project, there's a link in the description here as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Have an awesome weekend. And as always, happy practicing.